Right, I'll put the screw on the tool I've got for doing that up. Now the counter assembly goes on the top here. And it's just falling apart, so it might not go on neatly. Let's see how we go. It appears to be together, although this one's got a history of jumping. So we may be 180 degrees out with our count. I think that was right. Now that film advance is moving smoothly. So what I think was happening was that without this screwed up tight, this wasn't pulled down hard and what happens is that this ratchet here tends to catch on this piece. That ratchet noise stops. It's like that little ratchet's not doing oh, I know what can do that. Let's take this apart. It, that return spring on that little ratchet may not be doing its job. I've had that before when it's come unhooked and the ratchet works sometimes and not others. So some disassembly may be required here and it also makes things somewhat stuck. So, let's unwind all that, take this off. And hook that spring. And loosen these three screws. Off there. Why will that not lift? that out. Get it this screw at the back. And that little ratchet, that's innocent. There's no problem there. But it was dropping out. I wonder whether there was some other action not happening here whether the drive dog was not actually driving that wheel at the base. That's a possibility. I'm just inspecting this to see if it shows any signs of roughness at all. It doesn't appear to. And let's put this all back together again. It's better. This in place. Given the uh, rough running with this film advance before I pulled it apart, there's always the possibility that one of the gears has, has a tooth that's a little bit rough. I'd looked at them, I couldn't see anything like that. But not beyond the realms of possibility.
let's spring that over I'll get behind that lever that looks okay do these screws back up all right where's the gear there's the spacer that's the start position we want to come around one full turn put our advance lever on press that down swing it that around 90 degrees take my cocking rack slide that in there bring that around to the end See if that drops into place, it did, but this isn't centering properly, it's not returning correctly. I think that the advanced shaft might be twisted. Because this doesn't want to come back against the stop correctly. Let's pop it back on there and see if that's right. I may have to untwist the film advance shaft. Now the film advance shaft gets a twist in it typically because someone's reached the end of the film and they don't realise it because they didn't set the frame counter or they had a broken frame counter and they just keep pushing and forcing and basically what happens is at the top of the camera the top of the camera is connected to the shaft that twists because you're pushing it pushing it anti-clockwise and the bottom part doesn't move because it's at the end of its travel and so the, the brass shaft actually twists and that's a distinct possibility yeah this does not return to the rest position correctly should come around further than that doesn't appear to want to I'm looking at the frame counter is that pin That appears to be at the end of its stroke, but this isn't around far enough for this lever to drop into place. I think that that advanced shaft is twisted. Well, that's a bugger because it means I have to... Uh... Yeah, that would be right. That's why this thing tends to jam, because this thing is not sitting correctly. It never returned to its rest position. As soon as it jams up like that and you apply force here, all you do is you make that twist problem much worse. So that's what's happened. Once that problem arises, it tends to get worse because things don't want to move and the more people push on them to make them move, the more twisted stuff gets. Right, I'll have to take all this apart, remove my advanced shaft, and I'll show you how to untwist them. You may be able to see the twist here. It's um, it's quite marked. I can certainly see it. This whole shaft has got a quite a twist to it. 
And basically what I've got to do is slide something right down to the base of this squared off section, put another squared off piece at the top and then twist them in opposite directions to each other and that will untwist that shaft. Usually works quite well. As you can see I've got two pieces from the film advance of a retina 2A or 1A here that I can use. I'll slide that down, down over the squared off section there. I think I can slide it in that way up actually. And this one here I can put on here. Well, there's not enough sticking up here. So what I want to do is hold this end firmly here and twist the top anti-clockwise. This is always much easier in the vice. Check to see what I've achieved. Looking down from the top from the end I can see how much I've moved things and I need more than that and not much more. You have to be very cautious doing this. If there's not much meat here, there's not much metal. And quite apart from a twist, it's got a little bit of a bend in it by the looks of it too. And I think that will achieve it. I think that'll do what I need, need done there. So I'll put all this back and uh, bring you back when I'm at the point where everything's ready to go. Well that seems to have done the trick. Gets to the end of the stroke, clicks up smoothly, no arguments, drops back to the start. And this is the crucial point here. It can be depressed. Ready to wind on for the next shot. Previously it wasn't coming back past that point. It was stuck round here somewhere. And it couldn't be depressed. And you could get some wiggle on the film advance lever but it wasn't taking you anywhere you wanted to go. So that's it. That was the mystery. That was the mystery stiffness with the film advance. And so I was led up the garden path with that one because there were various things I thought that was, but it wasn't that at all. But the main thing is it's, that's good. That's good to go. So I can move on to the next part after that, I suppose, which will be getting the shutter release components all fitted. There's a variety of bits and pieces to the shutter release. There's a little collar here. If I put a little bit of grease on that so it stays where I put it. That sits on there. That limits the physical stroke of the shutter release. How far you can depress it. The shutter release button itself which sits on top of here has a little collar on it and that serves to stop the shutter release from being able to lift up too high. That This collar hits against the insides of the top cover. It stops the shutter release being able to lift up too high. If the shutter release lifts up too high, um, you end up with another problem. And the problem you end up there with is that the uh, shutter release can then rotate. This pin can come out of its guide hole, swing around slightly, and then of course it won't want to go back down the guide hole. 
and uh, as a result you can't depress the shutter. Very annoying. Right, so here's the shutter release components assembled. And there's one other component here, this tiny washer. Now that's a spacer washer and it's used in some cameras and not others. And it goes in here on top of that arm there underneath the shutter release button and sometimes it's present and sometimes it's not. If it was present and you lose it you'll find that the shutter release has, has, to, has to go down an awful long way for the shutter to actually re release. So far in fact that sometimes it won't reach. So be very careful if that spacer was supposed to be there and you've lost it, you can end up in trouble. So you have to be very cautious every time you take away a part of retina to I normally look down inside, down the side against the door, and I'm looking for that washer to see if one's present. If one's present, I know to look for it. Make sure it doesn't get lost, because I know it's going to have to go back in place. Well, all of that's moving very smoothly now, and um, really, I could just about put the door back on the front of this camera, I suppose. Okay, well, I'm going to fit the door back to this camera. So I've given these arms a bit of a tweak to uh, bring them in a bit. I'm sure you could measure that with an appropriate tool, but I'll just do it by eye. I'll put the paper washers in place. And I'll get this door in position. So I just get the top pin in place, stretch out the door, and get the bottom pin in place. So both pins are in position. Now there was a spacer washer on the hinge in one place, it was probably the top. Let's see if I can slide that in there. Just use the point of my tweezers to line that hinge hole up correctly and hopefully the screw will go straight in. And uh, it did. Here we need the screw in the position at the bottom. I've got my finger on the shutter release button at the top of the camera to make sure it doesn't fall out. So I don't want that falling out when I'm trying to get everything together because I could lose that little washer, that spacer washer I'd mentioned earlier. In fact, I think I'll put the top on the camera at this stage before I glue the leather back down just so I don't have any accidents and lose something. Now, just looking at this frame counter, it's the way the light caught it from the window, and it looks like, at the front here, of course that's weaker because it's got the big cut in it, that front's been pressed down. That, of course, would create some extra friction in the film of the uh, frame counter, and um, any extra friction in the frame counter would promote extra flexing in that uh, frame counter spring and that in turn would lead to earlier failure so I will not I will be taking great care to make sure that that top of that frame counter is not causing any problems so I'll just put this top on I'll put a screw in the end of it here to keep it. Now why is that not sitting down? 
Well, if the um, shutter release has moved, yeah, it's not lined up with its hole there. That's better. So the top cover wasn't seated correctly. That's better. And this is solely to make sure that my shutter release can't get away while I'm busy gluing this leather back down. First I need to have a look at the state of this leather. I know I've got a couple of tears in it. One here and one here. I've also got a couple of Zeiss bumps under there that are going to need cleaning up. So I better get those cleaned out. There are usually Zeiss bumps over these two brass screw heads as well and they certainly show here. These ones are two rivets, those rivets hold the spring that uh, return spring for our front catch, the catch for the front door. I need to get rid of these nasty big green lumps of green rubbish. That appears fine. Yes, yeah, some odd discoloration here. A patch here of black on the base of the camera and a matching patch of black on the leather at that point. Suggests to me that the leather had been loose at that point and um, moisture had got underneath there and caused that to happen. Now I'm putting some adhesive on a uh, piece of paper here. I'm transferring that to the leather with a toothpick. Hoping to get a nice even layer. Get it right into the corners because it's peeled back at this point. And at the other side. Yeah, right under there. This leather's uh, a little bit fragile. It certainly didn't appear to me it was going to cause me a problem earlier, but I can see that it's somewhat dried out. Let's get a bit more adhesive on there. If I'm careful when, and when I put the leather back down, um, those broken, those breaks in the leather will effectively disappear. Let's see how we go here. The case of getting where it's broken, often it's a bit of bleak. Um, want the right piece sitting on the top. actually lost a little bit of the black surface layer there by the looks of it. It'll be fairly invisible. Get that all pressed down firmly. That looks quite good. I'll just give that a wipe with a bit of naphtha at this point. Take 
any glue squeeze out away. It's just on that overlap, that broken edge there. Those Zeiss bumps may well not want to go away. The leather has formed quite a, uh, quite a strong bubble there. It doesn't always want to go down flat. But they will be flatter than they were previously. Right, so I've got a tripod surround here and a couple of screws. I'll get this fixed down in place. This size bump certainly doesn't want to settle. Its mate over there is not much better. Right, well that's the base of the camera. And uh, so that's all closed up down at that point. I want to clean the rangefinder next and get that in position.